political correctness didn't just sort of, you know, surreptitiously show up 10 years ago and like, oh, you know, we never saw that coming. You know, it's an old idea. It comes from the 20s in uh, Frankfurt, Germany. It's called the Frankfurt School. It's where uh, some intellectuals, where Marxists uh, were concerned because Marxism wasn't working. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the proletariat was not, in fact, rising up against the bourgeois or the uh, uh, the, the owners uh, of production. Uh, they weren't doing it because uh, they didn't anticipate a middle class. They didn't anticipate that people would be able to be self-sustained and wouldn't, in fact, get upset. As long as they were happy and content and were getting what they needed, they weren't going to sit there and complain. Wars came and went. Uh, more things came into their lives that made people more, uh, uh, you know, committed to what was more important at the moment. And so when they realized that it wasn't working as an economic uh, construct, they decided, what if we were to make it cultural? Instead of saying that the bad guy is the, uh, 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 the owner who controls production and that the good guys are the worker who's being exploited, what if we were to say that the bad guy is those who are in power or who've created uh, the system by which this culture is running effectively. Now it happens to be in the West, uh, Europeans, <laughs> who were usually white, so, was, so we had to start categorizing. Well, white guy is bad, uh, founding fathers are bad because they came from that system. You know, they speak English, that's got to be bad, and you know, this and that. And so they found the bad guy, the new bad guy, and the uh, good guy would be anybody that was uh, uh, the minority, though. Now, in America, the minority was easy to find because <laughs> slaves were brought over for Africa. Those poor people were certainly put into a miserable situation. All the founders knew that wasn't going to work when they made the Constitution, when they made the Declaration and read it. We find these truths to be self-evident. All men were created equal. It was kind of obvious that something was amiss there. And they battled with that from the very beginning about the slave issue. And they said, this isn't going to work. But they kept kicking the can down the road, figure they'll figure out next time. Right now, let's get the, uh, you know, the, 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 the union to stay together. Right now, let's get these, uh, these states to, to, to form, and then we'll worry about that. But that was not fair. Um, you know, there's lots of, of people that you could say are marginalized or were, did not have power. That's true, but that's been true about every culture in human history. This idea of focusing somehow on America that we invented slavery or we invented, you know, uh, a power structure or that certain particular groups happened to have succeeded because they started it. That's just the way life works. There's, it's cyclical. Go to other countries and different types of people control that. So. We just happen to be right here at this place in time, but political correctness is no different uh, than than virtually any other type of totalitarian belief system. It's about power. There's always going to be a special elite that are self-appointed. <laughs> we're smarter than you guys. We're better than you. We're more important to you, and our ideas are superior. So we will rule all of you guys in regards to our ultimate idea ideology, which is egalitarianism, and that we're all equal, and we're all perfectly good, and we will have the superior homes and superior food and superior fruit of our labor since we are so gracious to let you know that you're just like us. Now, this isn't me using right wing rhetoric, right wing rhetoric. Um, go see how communist Russia worked out. You're saying that uh, you know Stalin and. <laughs> Khrushchev and all these guys didn't have a little bit better palace than the peasants. You know, let's look at Pol Pot. Let's look. All these guys always, right now in, in North Korea, when these peasants are digging for whatever, a root to eat, uh, Kim Jong Un's, who knows how much meat he's eating. That's just the way it works. Uh, there's always sort of the elite that um, never put themselves under the same uh, challenges that their people are. So, Political correctness uh, started at Columbia University. That was where one of the intellectuals ended up, and they really found their means of distributing this narcotic, this cancer, uh, through the universities. That's how they did it. And it was a slow burn, little by little, 
test by test, just one more tenured professor, just one more new class we should think and discover, just one more re-deconstruction of the fact that really women have always been uh, oppressed and it's misogynistic, and maybe that should be why everything's wrong. And one more test about these poor people had a bad thing, but it's even beyond that. It's worse than that, and this and that. And all these people, truly, what is political correctness want? Power, control. What do they say is the problem? Somebody's got power and control. So it's always a hip hypocrisy. It's always a lie. It's always about somebody trying to destroy you and take your power because they believe they deserve it. But they do it under the auspices of altruism. I'll talk about how much you're worthy of special you know, needs. It's so patronizing. Because these are the people that gotten so bad, they, they need to be offended for others. They literally are saying, you're too stupid to know that you've been offended, so I'll do it for you. And they uh, have begun to s fragment us and find these groups, uh, intersectional, uh, intersectionality, where uh, suddenly every little minority group really is one. So they're finding power in this oneness. And whatever the latest cool thing is to jump on, the latest victim, let's all jump there and let's all do it together, and then we'll be more powerful. And so it's just uh, taken over. And they start taking over the language, so suddenly you can't say this, you can't do that. Now there's some language that is designed to demean people, and I understand that. But the problem with political correctness is they, they frame it as though it's this um, virtuous, sort of philanthropic, uh, secular version of morality and goodness. Uh, that all it is is just teaching not to be mean to people that really had no power. All it really is doing is just making sure that least amount of people are offended. It sounds kind of like a good idea uh, because you haven't defined your terms again, as I said. And so what happens is... Uh, these guys eventually subtly demand that you're going to have to relinquish some of your liberties if this is really going to work. Matter of fact, things that you've succeeded at, we're going to demean. Oh, you've, you've made it in life? Well, that's because you're white. You know, that's white privilege. Doesn't matter if you came from West Virginia coal <laughs> country and you had nothing, doesn't matter. Skin color, ironic because they say that everybody's, you know, racist. The moment you add skin color to a sentence, it's racism. Now, that doesn't mean there's not some reality to it. I'm not saying that there isn't racists. They exist. I'm not saying there aren't people that think they're racist superior. Of course, it exists. But for the most part, Americans are pretty nice people. They don't want racism. They don't want anybody. Just give us all a fair shake. That's what the Civil Rights Movement was all about. Just give us access to the same thing. And if we make it, great. If we don't, at least you gave us an, an option. But I want you to know this, the subtle difference uh, between deconstructing what worked in the West and what didn't to the progressive, to the, uh, and by the way, political correctness, is the progressive's religion. That's where they find their morals and their virtue. They stand by the idea of multiculturalism. All cultures are equal, all the same, who are we to judge? So they're literally saying the freedom of the West and capitalism is exactly like Nazism or cannibalism. Some people reason with their enemies, others eat them. Same thing, who are we to judge? Clearly, they're saying there's no truth, there's no reality, there's no superior ideas. Obviously, that's not true. But that's how they can control the narrative. And they've given this sense of multiculturalism, and yes, America was made out of multicultures. But our motto isn't multiculturalism. Have you ever noticed what our motto is? E pluribus unum. Out of many, many cultures, one. 
The Bible says a house divided falls. Multiculturalism says that all cultures can come to the U.S., maintain their cultural heritage, maintain their traditions, not care about ours, not assimilate, and everything will run hunky-dory. It can't. It's a divided house. The reason America is great is, is, is interesting because it is, there's an element of truth to the progressive line because it, it is filled with every nation on earth. That is absolutely true. Italians and Irish and English and Africans and Mexicans and all, they all brought the best of their culture that was much older than ours. They brought it here and taught us things and added to, our, to the rich fabric of who we are. Thank you, but then they became one of us. We found a common language, we found a common tradition, we found a, a, a common undergirding of who we would be and what it would mean to be an American. We, we saluted our flag, we showed uh, a, a, a patriotism and, and, and a gratefulness for our freedoms. Not perfect, but we're always trying to get better. That worked. Multiculturalism is going backwards. It's fragmenting, it's crushing, it's destroying. And uh, it's not gonna work.